Okay, so cycle 10 mollusks. Mollusks include lots of different things. Um, we've got chitons. Okay, chitons are this picture up at the top. You've got abalone, you've got squid, you've got clams, you've got snails, you've got cuttlefish. Lots of different things that are found in phylum mollusca. So here's your biology fun fact of the day. Um, do you experts say that you have to open a thousand oysters to find one usable pearl? How much okay. is pearl? Is? So uh, depending on, it depends on the size of the pearl. So if the pearls are larger and they're natural and they're um, you just find them, they're very expensive. But the smaller ones are much less expensive. I don't know. Big pearls can be thousands of dollars. So it just depends. And it depends on the color and the shape and all of that kind of stuff too. So, biology fun fact of the day. Okay, <clears throat> so how do these like wide variety of animals all end up in the same phylum? Because you've got like squid, which are very different from a snail or a clam. So how did they all get in this phylum? Well, they've got some features that they all share, which groups them all into this phylum. Um, here are the features that they all share. They have a foot. Okay, the foot is this basically big muscle that they use to move. They've got the radula, which is like a toothy tongue that they'll use to eat. Um, they've got the mantle, which will secrete the shell and also uh, line the internal, cover the internal organs. And then the shell is for protection. And then the visceral mass is the place where all of the organs are, the internal organs. Okay, so here's your little snail. We've got the mantle, okay, under here, and then here's the shell and outside. This is the foot, okay, of the snail, and then the radula would be in the mouth, okay? And then here, this whole, sorry, this whole thing is the visceral mass, all the internal organs, all right? So, other things that mollusks share, they'll have bilateral symmetry, okay? Um, they do have three cell layers. So the endoderm, the ectoderm, the mesoderm, and they do have a coelom. Uh, but in most mollusks, it's reduced to just being a cavity that surrounds the heart. Um, <clears throat> a lot of these guys, especially if they're marine, they will have a larval stage of life. They'll be neuroplankton, right, where they only spend part of their life as plankton. Um, and they all share a similar looking larva. It's called the trochophore larva. That's what it looks like. So you can have like clam larva and um, scallop larva and snail larva that will all look like that. Okay? So, that's what and then that will develop into the adult. Okay, so the molluscan body consists of two things. Okay, you've got the head foot region and then you've got the visceral mass. And the visceral mass is all of those internal organs like the circulatory system, the respiratory system, digestive system, excretory, reproductive, all of those systems are in the internal organs or the visceral mass. And then you have the head foot region, which is the foot of the animal, that large muscle, and then the head. So here's two pictures. So here's my snail, right? So you've got the head and the foot of the snail, okay, and then the visceral mass, the internal organs. And then for our squid over here on the right, Okay. Um, you've got the head and then the foot of the squid is tentacle and arms. Okay. So it's the head foot region and then this is actually the visceral mass. This is where all the internal organs are. So tomorrow when you do your dissection, you're going to cut through the mantle, open it up and see all the internal organs on the inside. There. So. Okay, so let's look at the different characteristics of the phylum. Um, the foot is a large muscle. They use for locomotion. That's the main thing that it uses it for. To move. To escape from predators, to burrow into the sand, um, and just to kind of creep along on the foot if you're a snail. They also use it for anchoring. So um, <coughs> some kinds of animals, ga uh, gastropods and stuff, will live like in the intertidal zone or close to the intertidal zone where there's a lot of wave action, and so they're going to want to kind of stay in place and not get swept out to see where they'll die. So they use their like little foot as a suction cup and suction onto the rock so that they don't get washed up to sea. So they'll use it to anchor in place, or they'll use it for predation. So for like squid and octopus, their arms are their, their foot, and they'll use those to like reach out and grab their prey and then bring it up to their mouth. 
Um, whereas, like, we've got things like a moon snail that has this big giant foot that it'll use to actually wrap around clams and prevent the clam from getting away when it eats the clam. A moon snail. Yeah. Um, they've got a big giant foot. So here's different pictures of the foot. So this is like a limp at the underside. So this part right here, that's the foot. Okay, um, and then this is actually how a clam digs. So this is its foot. It'll stick its foot out from between its two shells, um, and then like create like an anchor at the base, and then pull itself towards that anchor, and they'll stick it out and create the anchor and pull it. So they can dig into the clam that way. Um, all right, the radula. So the radula is a toothy tongue. So it's a tongue that has teeth on it. Uh, and it is used to obtain food. You use it to eat. Uh, how many of you have been licked by a cat? Right. Do you feel like the, the roughness of the yeah. tongue? Yeah. A radula is kind of like that. But depending on what the animal is eating, um, the teeth on that tongue will actually be different. Um, so, like, we actually have, like, the moon snail will have big, sharp teeth on its tongue in order to burrow through shells of clams, whereas, like, limpets and gastropods, like, snails will um, be moving around and they'll have, like, flat teeth that they'll use to scrape algae off of rock. So, the radula is a toothy tongue that they will use to eat. Bivalves don't have one. So, bivalves, like, clams and mussels and oysters and scallops, they don't have radula because they're filter feeders, so they don't need one. Um, but everything else does have one. And they can be toxic, like the cone snail, can have a toxic radula. So here's the, the radula inside the mouth. Okay? Um, and so if this was like a snail, it, would, it could use this radula to like lick algae off of rocks. Um, what's cool is that these teeth, if you're a snail that's licking algae off of rocks, they're going to get dull, right? And so in order to be feeding, you need to replace those teeth. And so they create teeth back here in the radula sac. Um, and then as these wear down, they fall off, and then these move forward in kind of like a conveyor belt and pop into place. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So their teeth never get dull, or if they do get dull, they fall off. Right? So they can keep feeding. So here's pictures of radulas. So um, this is the underside of a limpet. Okay, so see this big white thing right here? That is the foot of the snail, or the limpet. Um, and then here is their mouth. Okay, and then inside of there, this would be their radula. Um, limpets walk around licking algae off of rocks, so they don't need big sharp teeth. Theirs are much more flat, used for kind of like scooping algae up. Okay, um, whereas the moon snail, okay, that eats clams, this is its radula. Can you see like the actual like teeth on there? Yeah? Okay, so they're going to use that um, to drill through the holes of clams. So they take their big giant foot, wrap it around a clam, and then use this radula to burrow through the shell and eat the clam. How many of you have been at the beach and found like a little clam shell that has a perfectly round little hole through it? That's a clam that was eaten by a moon snail. Okay. So and then it washed up on shore. What? Yeah, because it's dead, so it's just the half of the clam. Yeah. Um, so they need big hefty teeth on there in order to feed, right? And burrow through those shells. This is a cone snail. Um, so a cone snail has this thing called the proboscis that it sticks out and it looks like a worm <laughs> fish. And so fish are like, doo, 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 ooh, worm, food. So they swim over to the proboscis and then out of the proboscis comes this. This is the radula of the snail. It's like a harpoon, full of toxins. Mm -hmm. So do to do, swim over to the worm and then, you know, spear in the face and then you're paralyzed when you get eaten by the Where snail. The no. snail on the so the snail is back over here um, and then, so the fish swims up gets stabbed and then it is paralyzed and gets pulled into the mouth of it. So, you know, as he, that's, you know, that's a little fish. Some of these, will, some of the cocktails will be bigger and they'll eat larger fish. But their mouth actually can go pretty wide and they can eat pretty big things. Like so, an anaconda. Kind of like an anaconda, yeah. Uh, fish that dumb to like swim into a spear. It doesn't look like a spear to them, it looks like a worm. So they're like, ooh, food. And so they swim over there and it's actually the cone snail promotes it. And then they die. That's the radula. The mantle is the tissue that covers and surrounds the internal organs. And its main job is to secrete the shell. Right? So it makes and repairs the shell of the mollusk. That shell is for protection. 
Um, the mantle can also be used for protection. So how many of you, after the dissection on Tuesday or in somewhere else, have touched like a clam or a squid okay, or like a snail, right? What does it feel like? Goopy. Goopy, yeah. It's like slippery, right? And it's not easy to hold on to. Um, so the mantle is very slippery. Um, and so when things try and like grab on to, to all sorts of mollusks, and if they get the mantle, it can be hard to hold on to because it can be slippery. So it can be used for protection. So you can see like this right here, everywhere that's black right here, that's actually the mantle of this limpet. limpet a limpet is like a snail that has a flat shell. Okay? Um, and so if something tried to grab onto that limpet, uh, it would be kind of slippery and hard to grab. We may find some of those kinds of limpets at the tide pools when we go in the spring. So we found limpets before. Um, and then squid, okay, squid and octopus and cuttlefish use their mantle for jet propulsion. So they actually will pull water into the mantle. So this is the mantle right here that surrounds the internal organs. Um, and so they pull water into here and then they squeeze it out through the siphon. Okay, the siphon narrows the opening and so it shoots them forward. All right. Um, and if you've ever eaten, how many of you have ever eaten calamari, like the rings of calamari? Oh, yeah. Okay, what you're actually eating is the mantle of the squid okay, that surrounds their internal organs. So you'll eat that part. Hmm? Yeah. So you're eating the tentacles. You eat the tentacles. I don't like the tentacles. No, oh, it feels like you're eating like an actual animal. <laughs> Like, I like the rings of calamari. Are you yeah. Okay, the shell. <laughs> the shell. Okay, it is a hard outer covering that's made out of calcium carbonate lined with shell. Okay, uh, and the shell is primarily used for protection. They can actually modify their shell. Um, by adding like spines, if they're in an area where they get are under a lot of predation, so pressure from predators, so they can actually add spines to their shell in order to try and protect them. Um, here is a picture of a shell that has a bunch of spines on it to, for protection. Uh, and then they can also like bulk up their shell if they need to. Um, if they live in an area that has a lot of predators. So these pictures right here, this is actually the same species of limpet, but in different areas where there's different amounts of predators. So this one all the way here on the right, that one is like where they live and there's not a lot of predators. And then this one on the left, that's like the same limpet, same type of limpet, but in an area where there's lots of predators. So they can actually bulk up their shell if they need to, which is kind of cool. Squid have a reduced uh, shell, you'll pull it out tomorrow in the dissection. Um, you'll pull out the, what's called the pen, and that helps you give structure and support to the squid. And then you'll actually use it to like pop the ink sack and write something on a piece of paper. Can you eat the eye? You can eat the eye of squid, yeah. Yeah, you can. Um, sea slugs and octopus don't have a shell. So, um, octopus. Uh, have you ever seen an, uh, an octopus like squeeze through like itty bitty spaces? Yeah, okay. no, yeah they're crazy, right? Those spaces that they can squeeze through. Because they don't have a shell, they're, they have a, an entirely soft body except for their beak. Okay, The beak in the middle of their mouth. So the only thing that they are limited by, the size of like what they can fit through, is by the size of their beak. So they can squeeze their body through pretty much any opening as long as it's slightly larger than their beak which is kind of crazy. So they can fit through lots of different things. The shell has three layers. Okay, um, You've got the periostracum, which is the outermost layer. It's got lots of protein in it, and it helps to uh, keep the shell from dissolving. Okay, So calcium carbonate would eventually dissolve in the water. And the protein on the outside helps to keep it from even starting to dissolve. The prismatic layer is the middle layer. Okay, that's the bulk of the shell. So that's made of calcium carbonate and protein. And then the inside layer is the nacreous layer. Um, and it's made out of calcium carbonate as well. 
But the calcium carbonate is laid down in a different crystal structure than in the prismatic layer, and because it's laid down in a different crystal structure, it gives you mother of pearl. Right? So the innermost layer is the nacreous layer, that's the mother of pearl layer of the shell. The nacreous layer is actually what the oyster will put over ear tint and make pearls. It's so an right? This is an adalyn, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So why is it that like as valuable as a pearl? Because you could take any abalone or stuff and find it. Whereas like pearls are much more rare. Well, like even if it's like more intricate or like bigger, it's still not like, as valuable. Not as valuable, yeah. Are they valuable at all? Yeah, oh yeah. So abalone were um, close to extinction in some areas because they're hunted for the mother of pearl and for their meat. So and yeah, like some are dollars a pound or something like that. Something like that, yeah. yeah. Like not farm. Not yeah. Not yeah, they're super expensive. So. But that's the nacreous layer on the inside. Um, I'll pass this around so you can look at it. You can actually see the three layers of the shell because um, part of this is it's dead. So part of it's kind of um, been worn away. So you can see like the brown like outermost layer and then the calcium carbonate, the white layer in the middle, and then the mother of pearl. Okay, so you can see the three layers. Yeah. So it's not like, uh, like an animal moved into the shell. So here's the periostracum on the outside, the prismatic on the middle, and then the nacreous layer, and then the mantle that secretes that shell. Um, if a mollusk wants to grow, okay, it will actually secrete the periostracum and the prismatic layer at the edge of the shell. So this is my little snail shell. If the snail, when it grows, it's going to secrete the prismatic and the periostracum at the edge, okay, and then like secrete more, secrete more, secrete more, and it's going to wrap around and it's going to keep growing that way. All right. Um, the nacreous layer is always secreted. Right. So they always are secreting that. The way pearls are made. So when an irritant, like a grain of sand, gets into an oyster, grains of sand are sharp. Right. They've got like little sharp edges. That's irritating to a soft-bodied animal. Okay. So just like if you get a bunch of sand in your shoes or something like that, it's irritating. Right. It's not comfortable. It is the worst. Um, they, so what they do is they take that sharp edge thing and they secrete this nacreous layer around it and create a little pearl, which doesn't have sharp edges, right? Um, and so they can form sand, make sand grains into pearls. Okay, so this picture represents the classes of mollusks. Okay, uh, and we're going to talk about four of these five classes. and. Um, you are going to need to know these classes and know the class characteristics. Okay. So the way that I would actually study this is because it's like to kind of create a chart. Okay, because the next three cycles, you're going to need to know the phylum characteristics and then the class characteristics because the classes of each of these are very different. Okay, so <coughs> the way that I would study for this is create some charts. So you've got your mollusca and then the the phylum characteristics and then your different classes and then the class characters. All right, so I would, that's how I would study through this. Um, so this picture represents the classes. So you've got bivalvia, those are scallops, oysters, mussels. Okay, um, you've got polypathophora, which are chitons, okay, gastropoda, which are snails, limpets, abalone, and cephalopoda, which are squid, octopus, cuttlefish, nautilus, that sort of thing. And then the last one, the one we're not gonna talk about, are tough shells. Um, they're a little bit more rare, so we're not going to talk about them. So, let's look at a couple of them. Polyplacophora. Okay. Polyplacophora means many plate carrier. So these guys actually have eight shells on their back. Many plates. So many shells, essentially. Um, and so they've got eight shells on their back, and then their mantle surrounds their shell. Um, and so the things that you would find in this class of moths are chitons. Okay. Um, here's what they look like. Uh, when we go to the tide pools in the spring, if you look at the rocks, you'll see there are chitons all over the rocks. Um, the chitons live in the intertidal zone and they walk around and they lick algae off of rocks. So that's what they do. Um, if you look at the middle picture, can you see the lines that run across the pink shell? Mm -hmm. okay. Each of those is like the separation between the shells. So if you count, there's eight. Okay, and then see the green that surrounds it? That's the mantle. Okay? So you've got eight shells on the dorsal side, and the mantle surrounds the, sh the shells. 
So that's not like one big shell. Those are all separate shells. Yes. So think of like a a roly poly, right? And how it's got like plates on the back. It's kind of like that. Now a roly poly is an arthropod, which is different, but it's got like yeah. kind of the same concept. Like one shell broke off where it like regrew or. Um. It would maybe. That's probably going to be doing some a lot of damage though. So maybe not. Yeah. Um, I remember I saw like this thing, like an old fossil, uh -huh. and it looked exactly like something in the middle, but it was like brown, obviously. Um, Chilovite? So these things mm -hmm. really like, I've been around for a long time. Yeah. Um, um, next class is gastropoda. So gastropoda means stomach foot. Okay. Um, and basically, their stomach sits directly over their foot. That's how they get their name. Uh, class members are going to be snails, abalone, limpets, sea slugs, all sorts of stuff. Okay. Um, all the way on the right, this is a sea hare. We'll probably find these in the intertidal zone when we go. They're a type of mollusk. Um, if you irritate the sea hare enough, it will ink because it actually has ink. Uh huh. It's got like this purpley color ink. Um, and They'll, like, if you try and, like, pick them up and stuff, they, they kind of, like, put themselves into this big ball shape to try and prevent you from... No, um, sea slugs. Oh, sea slugs. They sea oh, hair. Oh, Not all sea slugs. Um, characteristics of this class, they have one shell that's either coiled or uncoiled. So the abalone that I passed around, that's an uncoiled shell, whereas, like, a snail shell would be a coiled snail, a coiled shell. Um, they also have their stomach over their foot, which is their other class characteristics. All right. So here's some kind of sea slugs, new runs. Okay. So here's some pictures just to help you see the different kinds of things that you find in here. Uh, here's an abalone. That's the shell that I just passed around. That's what it looks like alive. Okay. So the actual animal inside there. Limpets. Okay. So there's a couple different kinds of limpets that you can see. Um, all sorts of kinds of snails. This is a sea butterfly. It's a shell of snail that lives in the open ocean and is a filter feeder. So. It's a filter feeder. Mm -hmm. Which is unusual for gastropods. Um, feeding options for gastropods. There are going to be a lot of different feeding options for gastropods. Um, they can be herbivores, so they can be walking around eating algae off of rocks or eating like kelp or even benthic diatoms. They can also be carnivores, so they'll eat other things like other mollusks, sea urchins, fish, barnacles, lots of stuff. Um, if they're carnivores, they're going to track their food by smell, and then once they get there to the prey, they're either going to like drill a hole through the shell or harpoon it, um, or just digest the flesh of the animal. So. Here's some different pictures for you. So you've got your cone snail eating the fish, your little snails eating the, um, the algae. Not the tusk shell over there. Okay. Um, you can also have scavengers and deposit feeders. So deposit feeders are going to be things that are walking around eating stuff off of the ground. Um, or you can have a deposit feeder that will actually eat the dirt itself, digest the organic matter that's there, and then poop out the dirt. So we can that's kind of analogous to you eating peanut butter covered marbles. Okay? So if you ate peanut butter covered marbles, your body would digest the peanut butter and then you would poop out the marbles. Okay? That's what these guys, these kinds of deposit feeders do. Okay, so the organic matter that would be there would be detritus, small pieces of detritus, some of the nematode worms that live between the grains of sand, okay, uh, anything, any small things that are living there. A scavenger would actually eat big pieces of detritus. Um, so next semester you'll watch a video and there's like this kind of snail, they're surfing snails, so they stick their foot up into the water when there's waves and they catch, catch a wave and they come up to shore and then they crawl up on shore and eat dead fish that wash up on shore. So they're scavengers. You can have filter feeders, but that's really rare for gastropods. That's 
filter feeders are typically your bivalves, but you've got your sea butterfly, which is um, a filter feeder. So, those are the kinds of feeders you could have. Nudibranchs are gastropods that don't have a shell. And nudibranchs are really pretty. So they have really, really bright colors and they have bizarre shapes because they have gills on their back. Right? And nudibranch means naked gills because they have no shell to protect those gills. So they've got their gills on their back. Their gills are called serrata. Right? Um, and they're all of these really, really bright colors. The reason why they are bright colors is because they're poisonous. They're not poisonous because of themselves. They're actually poisonous because of what they eat. So they eat nigerians, which have stinging cells, right? And so when they eat nigerians, they're actually able to keep those stinging cells from firing. Um, and then they take those and they stick them in the, the tips of their serrata. And you, when you touch a nudibranch, you can get sung by a jellyfish. So, kind of cool. So here's what they look like. So weird looking. So these orange things on the back, those are their serrata. And so that's where gas exchanges can take place for them. Um, yeah, that's depending on what they've eaten, it can be fairly painful. They're not they're not pleasant. Um, here's another kind, and then a couple more pictures, just because they're really pretty. They look pretty, but they're deadly. So. The one on the bottom right is really Right? So that's pretty cool. So. 